So at this point, we are going to be injecting the jawline. And what we're going to do is we're going to do two boluses along the periosteum near the gonial angle. Really, the only vasculature that is important in this area is the facial. The facial comes up through the antagonial notch, which is right here. So I'm going to identify where the facial artery is, and then we're going to make sure that our injections are posterior to that. So we're going to use the sterile ultrasound gel, and we're going to go into the antagonial notch, which I can feel right here, and I'm just going to confirm the arteries, and we can actually see them in B mode, and I'm going to change it over to color, and we'll there's the artery right there, and it's... So the artery is right here. We need to inject posterior to that. So in this injection, um, again, it's a very safe injection down the periosteum. When you inject the angle of the mandible, um, you're injecting onto periosteum, but with the movement of the masseter, it actually uh, gets involved into the masseter muscle. It spreads, and that's okay. It still, it still gives a great improvement in the gonial angle. As we get older, we lose that gonial angle. We lose that definition. We lose the definition between the jaw and the neck. And this gives us a little shadow between the jaw and the neck. We're going to be injecting two boluses of 0.25, so half a cc per side. You don't want to inject too much on a patient um, in their 50s or 60s because it does widen them a little bit. But you do want to improve um, the definition. So go ahead. There's the artery, and we identified it. And now we're going to go down onto bone. You could aspirate if you'd like. Um, Brittany likes to, but in this position, we can just inject straight down. And we'll, and we'll do it uh, towards the gonial angle, and we'll go a little anterior to that as well. There's 0.25. You're going to do the hole? Okay. And then we'll just go a little bit anterior to that. So I think that jaw lines, particularly in men, are extremely important. I think the single most important uh, feature of a man's face is, its, is his jaw line. Uh, in females, it's probably second or third. Uh, I think uh, the eye area is probably first in the female, and then the cheeks, and then the jaw line being third. In the male, it's number one. And it's pretty avascular there. So now let's uh, confirm the placement using our B mode. And uh, so let's go and take a look at Brittany's injection. And there we go. There we see a nice bolus on the periosteum. We see a nice posterior enhancement from the bolus. There we go. And uh, just a little posterior, you see the other one too. So um, nice job. There's the two areas of bolus um, of the HA. We're going to now do on the other side. So there we go. I'll take a picture of that. All right. Nice job. Let's do the other side. How did it feel? Pretty easy, right? Yeah. So I highly recommend incorporating jawline injections to your practice. It's a fairly easy injection, very low risk, and it has significant uh, changes in, to, to the patient's uh, beauty. So now let's look at the antigonial notch on this side. I'm going to go into uh, color Doppler on this side, and we can identify where the arteries are here. There's the facial artery. You see that, Brittany? Okay, so it's midline. So it's about right here. So there's a the facial artery, but we're injecting back here. So we have significant um, room for our injections. Facial artery here, injection point here. Okay? So now, Brittany, let's clean her off and do it. So what Brittany's going to do is she's going to feel the mandibular border and the gonial angle and the ascending ramus, and she's just going to come off of the 
uh, mandibular border about 0.5 to 1 centimeter. She's going to aspirate for 10 seconds, and then she's going to inject right down onto the mandible. Again, whether it goes onto the periosteum or in the masseter, um, what happens is, is actually you get reflux along the needle, and it does become part of the masseter, but that's okay. It still leads to great improvements in the masseter. I'm sorry, in the mandible. So that's about 0.25. She's going to go a little bit anterior and inject another 0.25, and we'll be done. It's a very safe procedure, particularly when you've checked for the facial artery using ultrasound. So she's aspirating right now for 10 seconds, no reflux, and she's going to inject down the bone. Perfect job. All right, so we have great improvement there. And now let's check it with ultrasound. Again, patients love to see this. You need to, if you get an ultrasound, you need to show your patients, look, the filler is exactly where I thought it was going to be. It's perfect placement. They have confidence when they leave that the filler, there's one of the filler boluses. And you see the filler bolus is actually a little bit in the masseter, and that's okay because it reflux up the path of least resistance, which is um, along the needle sometimes. So there we go. Perfect placement. Some of it's along the, mass, the mandible and some of it's in the masseter, but that's okay. All right, good job, Brittany. There we go. Okay, and you can tell it's a HA because of that posterior enhancement. That's what HA looks like, very anechoic, meaning black. And then posterior enhancement is white. That's behind it or deep to it. Okay, so there are the two boluses right there next to each other. That's a good picture. Hit the screen freeze for me. Okay, so there they are. There's the two boluses, a little bit off of the periosteum, uh, that posterior enhancement, and the anechoic HA product. Patient did great. Hardly felt a thing. So in conclusion, the Clarius L20HD was able to identify the arteries in the injection area, and I could inject free from those arteries and have much confidence that I'm not going to be injecting within the artery. The patient has more confidence and, and feels uh, more secure that the injections are going to be exactly where you want them. You can confirm placement afterwards using the Clarius as well, and you can document that and put it in the patient's chart. So I don't think that there's a better way to inject some of these areas that we went through, the temple, the piriform, and the mandible, without using ultrasound. If, you, if you're using ultrasound, you can guarantee that you are going to be above or below the vessel and stay out of trouble and have better outcomes and better safety.